Dan and Matt from Dan's Mystery. How's it going today? Super good. Hey, everyone. Yeah, do you guys like the cold? Are you guys wintry on eggs? It's nice, you know, a little bit of a change of season, but, you know, you still kind of have to, like, dig out all your warm clothes and kind of adjust to the shift to sweater, yeah. sweater time. I'm from Saskatchewan, so this isn't classified as cold yet, but it is nippy. It's getting I, chilly. So you're from Saskatchewan. I read that you guys were originally from Kelowna. Just you, The original? Just you. Okay. The original band back in the day was Kelowna, but now there's guys from Vancouver and Saskatoon. And, uh, Regina. Regina, yes, yeah. Regina, a couple of Saskatchewan boys. And now Vancouver's home? Yeah, Vancouver's been home for, yeah, for me uh, since 2000, so almost 20 years. What, why the move? Why here? Yeah. Uh, it was just life. I went to school here at SFU and then stayed, and I never intended to stay in Kelowna. You know, that was just where I went to high school and grew up, basically. So. Nobody tends to stick in their hometown if they can yeah, yeah. in a big city, you know? Yeah, yeah, let's talk a little bit about your sound. I'm the worst with describing genres, so I won't even ask. Okay. But, like, how did you come up with that sound? What influence is that? Well, I think, I mean, it was over many sort of years of listening to different stuff. I mean, when the band started out, it was a bit, like, it was, I remember trying to be, like, sort of like a metal band, but without the, you know, aggressiveness and the screaming of a metal band, you know? So that kind of made us sound a bit more tech, and then like people, you know, said it sounded like math rock or prog rock or that sort of thing. And then just as your influences, and you know, when you listen to more and more stuff, you just keep sort of amalgamating things. And I gravitated a little bit towards more piano-based sort of artists because that's you know what I was uh, main instrument to write on, and and so yeah, the sound just sort of progressed with the more influences and sort of bands that you listen to over the years and. And then you just sort of do your own, you know, do your own take on that. Our own version of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's why everyone does it, right? Hopefully. <laughs> well, there are some bands that specifically try to sound like other bands, or like really, or like we're gonna be like the new Strokes or the, the, the new Killers or something like that. And that's you know never been our sort of cup of tea. We've always just sort of carved out a path of our own where it's a bit hard to kind of put us in the genre, yeah. or like put us with a similar group of bands now, you know? Okay, so yeah, you guys have been around for a few years, I think like 17 or something now, yes. What do you think is the trick to staying around that long? Uh, I guess just having, you know, your life in check for like, you know, not just hoping that you're going to make all your money from your band, basically, you know, as long as you kind of are okay with that, with living the artist lifestyle, trying to have jobs on the side and so on, you know, it's, it's, uh, it certainly helps, but it sure hasn't felt like that long either. No. So it time doesn't. flies when you're in rock and roll and Yeah, I've got some friends that are very with kids and just seem like, you know, very suburban and they're always like, well, you're still, like, playing rock shows. I'm like, yeah. I don't think I would stop doing that, but, you know, it's just a lifestyle, I guess. How do you feel about the music scene back then compared to now? Now it's like social media and everyone's just the internet now, right? Yeah. The music scene is the internet. Yeah, it's crazier every year, you know, now, you know, bands make it big for just a YouTube video or, you know, posting something on a 10 second clip, you know, it's a totally different scene, really, but, but you just learn how to adapt over time. And, I mean, we don't have to use maps when we tour anymore, so it's like, you know, like back in the day, I had to like pull out a whole I don't think it's a problem. I mean, I was, we were, we just went and watched the Arctic Monkeys the other day, and they, you know, it's always fun, that moment where everybody turns their flashlight on, and sort of it's the new, you know, the new lighter. <laughs> and I mean, I'm all for, like, if I go to, ever go to a show, we'll put a, you know, put a 10 second clip on our Instagram story to show that you're, you know, what you're up to, and, you know, out and about, and it's just good social media in general, so, yeah, I'm all for our phones. I mean, it would be annoying if somebody, like, filmed your entire set, you know, from way in the back, and it was, like, kind of shitty, and then they posted, you know, like, you know, just bad, like a bad video that they just post, and then you keep getting all these sort of whatever, but most people tend to post for their friends and family, and you, usually it's Instagram stories these days, which are done in 24 hours anyway, so it's, it's fine, more the merrier, you know? Okay. 
My parents go, they're snowbirds, and they go to Palm Springs uh, in the desert, so I'm hoping to just go down there for like a week and sort of sit by the pool and hang out and, and then spend a bit, you know, just talk about going to Hawaii. But December is the kind of, December is the quiet time for bands, and usually uh, if, life unless, and unless you have like a Christmas gig or a New Year's life. gig, you're like, well, might as well just go somewhere hot and chill out, you know. I fly my mom in from Edmonton so she doesn't have to be as cold. Oh. <laughs> so she comes in and we hang out and I spoil her. Last year was still to Soleil on Christmas Eve, so we'll see what fun things we get up to. I don't know, what's on your what's on your Christmas list though? What do you want for Christmas? If Santa was oh. popping in, what's your number one? I saw some I mean I I've always wanted to have a drone. Have a drone. <laughs> That's true, you have always uh, wanted a drone. And I also saw some nifty like things that I'd like to get for some nieces and nephews I have, like like just like, you know, very sort of uh, like little toys, like this truck that if you draw a line like this and the truck just follows the line oh. where you draw. And you know, or and then there's another one with future the, toys. Future toys, you know. Whoa. That's but pretty cool. I yeah, I don't have any gifts that I want myself other than just Yellow tickets, Jeff Lynn's yeah, yellow. Yeah, maybe concert tickets or like you know, a fancy meal at a fancy place. That's true, fancy boys. Nice bottle of Japanese whiskey. There you go. Santa will get you some. There you go, yeah. And the last question is what's next for you guys? Everything. <laughs> Uh, well, like we, so we're, we're, the album came out this year, and so we might do a little bit more touring of Canada through the new year to support the uh, Foolish Games that came out in June. And uh, we just put together a cover of this song, Joy to the World, which we might uh, put out, a uh, Three Dog Night version, uh, and you know, put out a little bit of a B-sides thing of like a, a quick EP in the new year, and then... Uh, Probably just get back into a writing mode and you know, see where we go for a new record. Music, music, music. Just keep, keep on trucking, like they used to say. Trucking. Keep on trucking. That's a good idea. Keep on trucking. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for uh, having us. Is that enough? Uh, that's, that's got all the you need there. I think so, yeah. <laughs> and a bag of chips. <laughs> and a bag of chips right there. Oh, okay, pass on. Cool.